was near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and never ever more ever more bless the Lord Just praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. You are the reason I'm dancing. You are the reason I'm dancing.
somebody just worship the Lord and give him praise. Hallelujah. Just give him all the adoration. Thank you, Jesus. I'm laying in the mouth for the joy of the Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Oh, amen. Oh, we're singing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen.
In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Foundation. He shall fill my cup tonight to overflow. Oh, he has the Lord commanded it. Bring your vessel not yet full. He shall fill my cup tonight to overflow. Oh, he with the Holy Ghost and power and power. He shall fill my cup tonight to overflow. Oh, him has the Lord commanded it. Bring your vessels not yet full. He shall fill my cup today to overflow. Oh, him. With the Holy Ghost and power, and power, he shall fill my cup tonight to overflow. Oh, him has the Lord commanded it. Bring your vessel not yet full. He shall fill my cup today to overflow. Oh, him. With the Holy Ghost, um, for the last time, this shall feel. He shall fill my cup today to overflow. Oh, in as the Lord commanded is, bring your vessels not yet full.
Say, my father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. Fill it up. Say, my father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. Say, for the sake of Christ, fill it up. Say, my father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. For the sake of Christ, fill it up. Shall we pray, my father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. For the sake of Christ, fill it up. My father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. For the sake of Christ, fill it up. My father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. For the sake of Christ, fill it up. My father, I come tonight with an empty vessel. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, battles of evil flow from my foundation. Say like you mean it. Shout it again. Say, blood of Jesus, cut it off. Say, battle of evil flow from my foundation. Say, blood of Jesus, cut it off. Shall we pray? Battles of evil flow from my foundation. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Battles of evil flow from my foundation. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Battles of evil flow from my foundation. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Battles of evil flow from my foundation. In Jesus' name we pray. Good job. I pray for you that as you stand before him tonight, every flow from your foundation that is not allowing your glory to function, may that flow be cut off. Every evil flow that is compromising your glory, let that evil flow die. Every evil flow from your foundation that will not allow your glory to shine, let the evil flow die. Amen. Say evil flow from my foundation that will not allow my glory to shine. Die. Shall we pray evil flow from my foundation that will not allow my glory to shine? Die. Evil flow from my foundation that will not allow my glory to shine. Evil flow from my foundation. That will not allow my glory to shine. Evil flow from my foundation. That will not allow my glory to shine.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you that you have brought us here tonight for a specific kingdom agenda of deliverance. Deep deliverance. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As we look into that world tonight, let it so be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as we look into your world, Holy Spirit, we invite you as the teacher. We invite you as the minister of deliverance. Have your way and let all glory be given to you. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Test for the second congratulations. Say, so here we are again. Here we are again. Genesis chapter 48. It's going to be a wonderful ride in the Lord tonight. I want everybody to catch that spirit. That spirit of you cannot come into his presence for nothing. If he called you and you answered, you are blessed. Tell somebody. Say to another person. Nobody eats the call of God in vain. And always agree that it is by his calling you are here. <laughs> it is not my voice that you want to hear. You want to hear heaven. It, it is not the beauty of the speaker that is drawing you. It is his voice you heard that asked you to come here tonight. And here you will not be disappointed. Amen. I will quickly say, last week, in Genesis chapter 47, it closed with swear. Jacob asked Joseph to swear. And I explained something very fundamental that may not be easy to grasp about swearing that we are made to swear because of our makeup and because of the current status of our makeup. It is our makeup, the way we are made up. And we are is it today that to swear becomes essential. As a matter of fact, Jacob told Esau to swear <laughs> that he will give his best right if he gives him that food that he was, I say, swear that you give me your birthright. This is not the first time Jacob will use the word swear. He used it before with Esau. He said, swear. <laughs> and that's why I said, what do you want me to care about this? Just give me this food. So to swear for mankind is like the same reason why we need covenant to function. It's the same reason why we need laws that man must be guided by laws. A lawless society is a chaotic society. In fact, without law, there will be disorder. If everybody begins to do what is good in their eyes, eh, there will be total chaos. So, so I want you to understand the fundamental nature of man calls for people to swear. That is why you have swearing in ceremony. We are even calling that a ceremony. People are made to swear when the, when the subject matter is of such a great importance. When it becomes very important to you and you are dealing with another person, you want that person to swear. Whether that person is your mother, your father, or your son, it's irrelevant. You just need to get them to swear. So it is because of our makeup our makeup of being a soul that is supposed to operate with a body and a spirit. And the spirit is supposed to be only the Holy Spirit. But there is a change of status. It is no longer only the Holy Spirit. It is now necessarily many spirits. That makeup, please believe it. Think of it. It is the makeup that has made it necessary for man to swear. Because you don't know what spirit is operating at any point in time. The spirit that operated last two, two o'clock may not be the spirit operating by 7 p.m. 
and we have come to know this, even though many still find it to believe. That is the nature of swearing. Tonight, Genesis chapter 48 is going to take off from Genesis chapter 47 left off. So he swore to Jacob that I will go and bury you where you want. And we use that also to explain the cult of the dead. God allowed, there was something idolatrous in it, in that demand. Because if there wasn't something idolatrous, why did Jacob not trust God? The God that told him that, listen, I will bring you out of here. I will bring you back here. Why couldn't he trust that God? to tell Joseph or make Joseph to do it. There are some things that I'm going to show you tonight that is bringing us to the topic of Genesis chapter 48. Genesis chapter 48. Before I open it and read, I want everybody to look at this. If you have not, if you did not participate in the midnight gate for what we are going to do tonight, I will enjoin you to please listen to it again, to listen to Foundational Deliverance 101. If you are here, you are listening to me, and you have not, you did not partake in the midnight gate. Some of the things we are, we shall be sharing tonight, they will be very easy for you to get if you have watched that video that was from Midnight Gate on Friday night, Foundational Deliverance 101. Amen. Amen. And if that is the case, I'm going to pull up right now Genesis chapter 48. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? <laughs> Are you happy to move forward? Say, I'm happy to move forward. <laughs> Say, I'm happy to move forward. Say, I don't know about you. <laughs> but I'm happy to move forward. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm happy to move forward. Listen very carefully. Genesis chapter 48. I want every eye to be on this scripture. Now, it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply and multiply you. I will make you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are mine as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring, whom you, be, whom you beget after them, shall be yours. <laughs> they will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's son and said, who are these? Joseph said to his father, they are my sons, whom God has given me in this place. And he said, please bring them to me, and I will bless them. I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age, so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not seen your face, but in fact, he said, I had not thought 
to see your face. But in fact, God has shown me your offspring. Verse 12. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand, towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand, toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was, on, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's, Manasseh's head, guiding his hands no healing. For Manasseh was the firstborn, and he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom thy, my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now, when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you, Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. I am prompted to pray for somebody that is carrying the battle of glory exchange. Every battle of glory exchange that has left you behind in the race of life, may that battle cease tonight. Amen. Every battle of glory exchange that has left you where God has moved you out of, may that battle cease tonight. Amen. Every battle of glory exchange that will not allow your star to shine, I use the blood and I silence the battle. Amen. Say battle of glory exchange. Battle of glory exchange. That will not allow my star to shine. That will not allow my star to shine. As created by God. As created by God. Die in the name of Jesus. Name Say of battles of glory exchange. Battle of glory exchange. That will not allow my star to shine as created by God. Are you, can you say it like a minute? Yes. Die, begin to pray. Battles of glory exchange that will not allow my star to shine as created by God. Die, battle of glory exchange. <coughs> battle of glory exchange. That will not allow, as created by God, die in the name of Jesus. Battle of glory exchange. That will not allow my star to shine, as created by God, die in the name of Jesus. Please pray. Battle of glory exchange. That will not allow my star to shine, as created by God, die in the name of Jesus. Battle of glory exchange. In Jesus' name we pray. Good job, good job. Now go back to verse 20. And thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Verse 21. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one, one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. Amen. 22 verses in Genesis 48. 
22, how will I put it? 22 fire-laden verses. When I say fire-laden, you will understand. Because right from verse 1, it started. Right from verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed, your father is sick. Somebody that is carrying the blessings of God is sick. Somebody that talked to God is sick. Somebody that have a tête a tête with God can become sick. <laughs> Somebody that carries the glory of God can become sick. There are pastors who, I was reading this story, who are sick and they won't let their congregation know. I said, because if the congregation know that the pastor is sick, <laughs> the congregation will leave. If pastor is sick, how is a sick pastor going to help me? That the church will empty out. So pastors, even when they are sick, they try to pretend as if they are well. Because if they, if they show that they are sick, some members will disappear. How does that sound? Here we have, nobody is doubting that Jacob communicated with God. Nobody is doubting that God has his backing to come to Egypt. Nobody is doubting the intensity of the relationship between Jacob and the Almighty. Nobody is doubting if there is a kind of rapproche between Jacob and heaven. Nobody is doubting. But this verse 1 says, your father is sick. If you look, let me do a little bit of, if you look at Good News Bible, it says, his father was healed. There's one, I think it's the New King James, your father is sick, is it night? Your father is weakening. Though he was having a blessing of God, he's weakening. Um, your father is sick. So somebody who carries the glory of God can become sick. That is why two things happen that I need to share with you in the next very 60 minutes. What are these two things? I took the liberty, I took the liberty to call it tonight. I took the liberty to call it Something that has to do with foundation, but see what, what it is called tonight. Hmm. You better cooperate. <laughs> Amen. Tonight is called foundational evil flow. What is it called? Foundational evil flow. Can you say like a minute? foundational evil flow. What is a flow? The closest thing to you to describe a flow is a river. Everybody knows that a river flow. And we, we often say that prayer as the river does not struggle to flow. Do you understand? We often say that prayer. So we know when we are speaking of a flow, it's a unidirectional motion, a motion in one direction. When you have traffic, you have a traffic flow. And traffic flow like in one way. If you're on the right hand side, everybody is going north, everybody is going south on the other side. There is a flow of traffic. You will see the train of the flow. That's, that's why you have hold up. When the flow is held up, and the flow will cease, and you'll be sitting down there. The flow is, is, is under influence. When the flow is under influence, 
the flow will become like static. But now we are speaking of a flow all the same, but a flow that is evil. A flow that is not godly. A flow that is not pleasant. A flow that is not comely. A flow that is not beneficial, so to speak. And we call it evil flow. But when we now add the word foundational, it means it is coming from under you. Foundation is that part that makes what you see to exist. I repeat, foundation is that part that makes whatever is visible to exist. If the foundation is removed, what you are seeing will not appear to be what it is. It's like a house. The house is only standing because the foundation is standing. If I deal with that foundation, like the leaning tower of Pisa, in Italy, that is like this. And people go there to wash it. And I told you what happened there. Sinking sand. Foundation is that part that you don't see, but it is the most important in any structure. When it comes to human beings, foundation is that part that was before you, that makes you to be who you are. Foundation is what you are standing on. A scientist said, if I see further than the others, it is because I am standing on the shoulders of giants. On what are you standing? We are standing on the rock of ages, the rock that will not allow you to sink. But stand, you must stand. So the foundation that we all are standing on is very important. It is about that foundation. I want to show you two things tonight. Whenever we speak of foundation, we are speaking of what allows us to stand and be what we are. If your foundation is not supporting you, you are in trouble. If your foundation is feeding you wrongly, rubbish, you are in trouble. That is why Psalm 11, verse 3, is one of the most important statements of foundation in the Bible. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The righteous are supposed to be the people of God, people with power. So what can they do? Those who are supposed to have power. If you destroy the foundation, there is little they can do. And that is why we have that cliche on deliverance ground, that if you don't deal with your foundation, your foundation will deal with you. Where is foundation coming up here tonight? I want everybody to pay me careful attention. One, with sickness. If somebody is to have a rapport with God, you would think that rapport should make you never to get sick. If I'm talking to Biden, and Biden is my, is my party, can I be financially poor? Somebody may argue, yes, Pastor. If you know Biden as president, can you be financially poor? Where I came from, <laughs> originally, I'm from kingdom now. Where I came from, it is who you know that matters. They call it Godfatherism. Since if you know the president, you can't be poor again. Why? He will give you just one contract. <laughs> just one contract of $25 million, and you are settled for life. Do you understand? So what, what, what am I saying? If you know God, the way this is the last of the patriarch, how dare you get sick? Many of us, we don't appreciate the gospel because we don't know what is the bad news. Tell somebody. Can you say it to another person? See, the gospel means good news, right? When we are preaching the gospel, I bring you good news. Somebody who has no bad news, what will good news do to that person? Somebody that is telling you, I don't have any bad news, so I don't need your good news. That is who you will find mostly in the world. People believe that uh, the, the, 
they, they don't need good news. Because they don't know that they already have bad news. The, the bad news, they've gotten used to bad news. That bad news is not bad news to them anymore. You know, when somebody gets used to evil so much that it becomes the norm. They say they become numb to the evil of sin. Many of us have become numb to bad news. It has, it, once you open your television, it is bad news. So you get used to it. But if you know the bad news, you will appreciate good news that Jesus Christ represents. It is bad news that man gets sick. God did not create us that we should get sick. But everybody, sooner or later, will get sick. The presence of God is not the absence of battles. Tell somebody. The presence of God is not the absence of battles. Say it to another person. The presence of God is not the absence of battles. So somebody thinks that when you have God, there should be no battle. So many of us, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> I'm telling you now how, how people look at it. They believe that, is this, how, how can a pastor be going through that? How, what is he pastoring? <laughs> Have you heard that before? Yeah. <laughs> what is he pastoring? How, how can he be sick? If he can't help himself. But remember, I want to use some examples very quickly. Foundational evil flow that I'm talking tonight, one is sickness and infirmity. Sickness and infirmity is a foundational evil flow. Can somebody hear me? Sickness and infirmity eh, is a foundational evil flow. It is coming because of what you carry. And what you carry, you inherited it. It was given to you. So they gave you a sinful nature. The sinful nature did not start with you. It started before you. The one who handed you a sinful nature handed you sickness. The one who handed you a sinful nature handed you infirmity. The one who handed you a sinful nature handed you strange battles. So it is foundational. It is coming, sickness is coming from our foundation. Can somebody hear me tonight? Somebody must receive healing tonight. Somebody must receive healing tonight. Because there are two foundational evil flow I want to talk to you about in Genesis chapter 48. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> I'm not the one doing that. Not the pastor. I don't know how that came about. I don't know who has that power. <laughs> but listen, there are two foundational evil flow that affects everybody. One is sickness and infirmity. Two, glory battles. What do I call it? Glory battles. In fact, instead of just calling it glory exchange, I'm going to call it glory battles. Glory battles are foundational. I want to explain to you from what we are reading two foundational evil flow. That is, it is not how smart you are that will make you to get over them. You remember? So two foundational evil flow. Number one, sickness and infirmity. Two, glory battles. Those are the two I want to mention tonight. In that glory battle, you see glory exchange. You will see status exchange. But they are both of them foundational evil flow. That is something that is flowing, sooner or later, it will get to you. It doesn't matter who you know, what you know. Death will come to you. And the way death will come to you, <laughs> you can't avoid it. As sure as death, so is sure death. So death is an evil flow from our foundation. We can, it will flow and get to us. Sooner or later, the flow of death, you can delay it, you can do something, but it will come to you. 
It is just the nature of the beast. Why we are looking at this tonight in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 21. Listen to what Hebrew. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed, <coughs> your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons. No, 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 no I, I, I beg your pardon. Hebrew 11, 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, and can somebody hear what I'm reading? When he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Can we all read Hebrew 11, 21 together? One, two, let's go. Can we bless when we are dying? Can we bless when life is going out of us? Is blessing not supposed to be done with power? Is somebody that is losing, to lose life is to lose power. Is somebody losing life, losing power, has the power to bless? Apparently. Apparently, yes. But we are saying yes now, but in our inner conscience, we don't agree with it. Because we count sickness to be signs of weakness. When somebody is sick, you don't believe in that person anymore. When somebody is, you see, what they reported to us here was that he was sick. That, that indeed your father is sick. <laughs> there is a scripture in the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings, I believe it's 2 Kings chapter 2. No, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. No, 2 Kings, where it was written about that, this, that, that Elisha would die of, the, of his sickness. That Elisha had a sickness of which he would die. And the king came to Elisha, who had a sickness. And he was able to help the king, even though he was sick. I'm only trying to say this to everybody that is listening to me. Sickness is an evil flow that we get to everybody. But that does not mean you don't have God. To be sick doesn't mean God has abandoned you. To be sick doesn't mean God is absent. To be sick doesn't mean God is not looking at your side. To be sick doesn't mean that you have no relationship with God. Because that is what it has become. I wish I can recall, I can recount this story of this pastor, it was in a, place, in a country called Ghana when this happened to that pastor. And it was a very sad story. Why? Because people believe that if you are sick, that means God has abandoned you. And I want everybody to get this right today. The presence of God is not the absence of sickness. The presence of God is not the absence of what? It's not the absence of sickness. The presence of God is not the absence of battles. That you know God and you have God doesn't even mean you won't have battles. Jesus Christ was God and he was crucified. When he was on the cross, what happened? On the cross of Calvary. Somebody, some people tell him, why don't you help yourself? You say you are, you are somebody, and now you're on the cross. Why don't you show us that you are somebody? Eli, Eli, lava sabashtani. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? It looks like that. But God was even doing, he said, uh, he has been given a name that is what? Greater than every other name. How did that name come about? Through what looked like string battle. So I'm only saying that our foundation has predisposed us to some evil flows. One of those evil flows is sickness. So when you have sickness, you need to have a theology that will help you. 
Because the theology of those around you may well make you be more sick. When you are sick, you need a theology that is kingdom. When you are sick, you need a theology that will keep you standing and keep you going. Because the theology of those around you will work against your theology. Because many of them will begin to ridicule the God you serve. Many of them will begin to say, if you are truly serving God, remember they said, who sin that this man was born blind? Because we all assume <laughs> somebody sin. That is why they, who knows what the parents we are doing? That's why they have a blind child. Eh? Who knows what the parents we are up to? That God, <laughs> God not make their son to be blind. I mean, that, that is how we roll. Oh, oh, oh. Who knows what they did? Eh? They, they don't want to tell the truth. They ain't saying the truth yet. That's what, that's what happened. And Jesus Christ answered them. He said, no. What I'm preaching now is not necessarily the way I take it. When we will deliver us ground. Somebody will remember. He said, no. He said, Jesus Christ said, no. Nobody's sin. But that God may take the glory. <laughs> Nobody's seen, but that God may take the glory. That is why this person was born blind. That sin is not involved in it. There are a lot of theological issues with that statement. But somebody said, the God that has to take glory only when I suffer. What kind of God is that? Why should God take glory? Why must God show his glory by my suffering? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Suffering is a flow of life. Hardship is a flow of life. Sooner or later, they will come to each and every one of us. Man cannot be without battle. As sparks fly upward, so is man born unto trouble. Jacob was having a trouble, a trouble of sickness that would make him die. But God was with Jacob. And the same thing happened to Joseph. Many people say, ah, if God was with Joseph, because there is no part of the Bible where you can read so much affirmation, and God was with Joseph, and God was with Joseph, and God was with Joseph, and he was going down from slavery to Potiphar's house to, to rape. rape. They were going to rape him. Not then in jail. The Bible recorded that the baker, even though Joseph told him, please don't forget me, the Bible recorded that the baker forgot about Joseph. Was God with Joseph when the baker forgot about him? Was God with Joseph when the baker didn't remember him? Yeah. My helper, oh, my helper, my... Where is your helper? He said the helper forgot him. And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. May your helper lose their sleep Amen. until they help you. Amen. And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. May your helper lose their sleep until they help you. Amen. Say, and the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. Say, my helper, lose, my, lose your sleep until you help me. Shall we pray? And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. My helper, lose your sleep until you help me. Please pray. And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. Please 
Please say that prayer. Say that prayer quickly. And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. My helper, lose your sleep until you help me in the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. My helper, lose your sleep until you help me in the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. My helper, lose your sleep until you help me, until you help me. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, this is that scripture. Thank you, Surah. Listen, it says, Second Kings chapter 13 and verse 4. Elisha had become sick. Do you remember who Elisha was? Elisha was the one that carried the double anointing of Elijah. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. It is a flow. It is an evil flow. Life consists both of good and evil. You can't have only good without the evil. They both come together. And Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face, weeping over a sick man. Can you, can you imagine you go to the hospital to be somebody who is sick? <laughs> People are, people are expecting you to bring help to the sick person in, this, in the dying bed. People are expecting you to bring flowers, to bring help, to, to bring food. But you are not coming to draw power. Can somebody hear me? You are supposed to bring power to the sick, but you are not coming to draw power from, from the sick. Brethren, that is how our God is. When you come to the issue of God, you can draw power from the sick. The children of Joseph were blessed by a sick grandfather. We are still coming to their own, but these two grandsons, they were blessed. So what am I saying? Sickness doesn't mean you have no God. I want somebody to remember that today. It is an evil flow that will come to us. But the enemy also can use it to attack us. That is why we come to a deliverance ground. Because they know it must come. They can bring it before time. All of us will die one day. But we speak of untimely death. We speak of accidental death. <laughs> we speak of sudden death. What is the difference between sudden death and death? What is the difference between untimely death and death? An untimely death and death. What is the difference between untimely death? I know I'm just asking a rhetorical question. Because we pray all the time. Eh? Power of untimely death. What was the Pastor, death is death. No. Because the case of Job makes us to understand. When God told Job, do everything you like, but don't take his life. Meaning, God could, could, have, could have allowed Satan to take his life. Meaning Satan could have taken the life of Job if God did not stop him. So we pray accordingly against untimely death because there is perversion. Yes, we will die, but the one that perverts everything is also perverting that. It will make you die before your time. It will make you die suddenly. It will use death to torment you. It will use death to take your worship. It will use death to maltreat you. 
But die, you will die. But before you will die, they will use that death to torment you. Every power of the grave assigned to torment you, let the power die. Amen. Say, power of the grave assigned to torment me, die in the name of Jesus. Power of the grave assigned to torment me, die in the name of Jesus. Power of the grave assigned to torment me, die in the name of Jesus. Please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. It's very quickly to finish it. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. You will see this case also with 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 Apostle Paul. Would you say Apostle Paul did not carry the power of God? But Apostle Paul also had issues. Man will have issues, tell somebody. <laughs> it is a foundational evil flow. But thank God for the good news. Because even in the face of foundational evil flow, our Christ has triumphed. Can somebody hear me? Even in the face of foundational evil flow, Christ has triumphed. And if we are in Christ, we must also triumph. Amen. Even in the face of foundational evil flow, Jesus Christ has triumphed. You will triumph. Amen. You need to be able to couch it. If you pull up 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, this is the case of Apostle Paul. The foundational evil flow got to him. <laughs> How did it get to him? First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 12. If you pull it up, Second Corinthians, look as if my frame is freezing. Um, listen to this. First, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord Christ, for what thing? That it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities. Apostle Paul had infirmities. Tell somebody. Look, look, look at me, Apostle Paul. They used his apron. Apron from the body of Apostle Paul was healing people. Apron from his body. If they put apron from the body of a pot on you now, you begin to dance. Even, even when you are sick. Do you understand? But guess what? He had infirmities. So when Jacob is record, re recorded that there is sickness, put it in perspective. Because why didn't God stop that sickness? There are some people who died, they just walk away into death. Right? We know people. They say, Noah walked with, uh, what was it? There was somebody that walked with God and was no more. Enoch. Say, so Enoch walked with God and was no more. Nobody knows where the grave of Enoch is. Right? He walked with God. So I'm saying this. There is foundational evil flow. And this evil flow, nobody can avoid it. But you can triumph over it in Christ Jesus. That is, you have the power to face it and subdue it. You have the power to ride above it. You have the power to use it the way the eagle uses the storm to rise. As the eagle uses the storm to rise, we can use the battles of life to rise. May every battle confronting you Become your stopping stone to greatness. Amen. Your amen is not resounding. Amen. May the strength battles confronting you become your stepping stones to greatness. 
May the strange battles troubling your life become your stepping stones to greatness. May the strange battles troubling you become what will bring glory to God. May the strange battles that is afflicting you become what God will use to promote you. In the name of Jesus. So that is the first part of the foundational evil flow. The part number two, very quickly, is the part of glory battles. They brought the senior and the junior to the grandfather to bless. Somebody may be wondering, how come Jacob didn't know the children of, of Joseph, that they have to be introduced to him? It's not that he doesn't know them. He has seen them before. Just because his eyes were dim, he wasn't seeing well. So somebody may be asking, but pastor, if, if these are his grandchildren, how come he didn't know them when they came around? Because it was dim in his sight. But something happened here. If you are Manasseh, and if you are Ephraim, just like Jacob and Esau, just like Ishmael and Isaac, I have three examples before this one. From, from two or more witnesses, the truth shall be established. If you come with me to the book of to the book of Genesis chapter 28. Genesis, no, before, before Genesis chapter 28, there is also this one in Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17, from verse 17. This is the case of what you see. Let everybody listen to me now. Because if you are Ephraim, there is a way you must pray. If you are Manasseh, there is a way you must pray. Everybody have their prayer. <laughs> there, was a, there was a way Abel was supposed to pray. There was a way Cain was supposed to pray. God gave Cain the way to pray. Say, he's crashing at your door, trying to take you over. That is a prayer. Strange powers crouching at my door, fall down and die. Do you understand? The prayer Cain did not pray. The serpent crouching at my door, looking to enter, be consumed by fire. Stranger at my gate, fall down and die. Say, strangers at my gate, fall down and die. Shout it three times. Can you shout it three more times? Say sickness at my gate, fall down and die. Begin to shout it. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I want to show you two evil this evil flow of glory battles. It did not start with Ephraim and Manasseh. Just that picture. I brought my two sons for you to put your hand. I arranged them. I am their father. I arranged them such that the senior will be on your right hand because the right hand is the right hand of power. I arranged them that the junior should be on your left hand that is the one that should carry the lesser blessing. And you now, my father, who is supposed to know better, instead of you to do as I arrange, you now decide to play your own game. You now decide to do according to your own mind. Instead of you to bless like that, you now cross your hand. Whoever is crossing hand, when it is time to bless you, may their hands receive correction. Say, so who is crossing hand when it is time to bless me? Let your hands receive correction. Can somebody pray who is crossing hand when it's time to bless me? Let your hand receive correction. Who is crossing hands 
when it is time to bless me. Let your hands receive divine correction. Let it receive divine correction. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, don't get me wrong. The Bible says, knowingly, that is, Jacob knowingly crossed his hand. Don't get me wrong. This, this, is, was, this was from heaven. This, what, whatever Jacob was doing now was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But Manasseh has to pray. Ephraim has to pray. But they don't have to say the same prayer. We, we just have to pray. If Cain prayed like that, based on the secret that God gave him, something is crouching at your door. Such secrets we receive from the scripture all the time. There is somebody, when you are about to be blessed now, they will cross their hand because they want to play favoritism. After this prayer, it will backfire. Amen. After this prayer, somebody who wants to bless you, and they are now using witchcraft to cross their hand. That witchcraft will backfire. Amen. Somebody may want to bless you and the hand, is, when they are bringing the hand, witchcraft will cross the hand. Amen. Every hand to, that is bringing you a blessing and witchcraft is crossing that hand. Let the witchcraft die. Amen. Do you understand? They can use witchcraft to cross people's hand. It's now, in this case, God crossed the hand. Don't get me wrong. It was God that crossed the hand. But there are cases when they want to give you that promotion. Somebody will just come from nowhere and had a bad word. They are crossing hand with your blessing. Any power that will cross hand with your blessing this week, this month, let the power die. Amen. Say power that will cross hand with my blessing this month, fall down and die. Pray very quickly. Power that will cross hand with my blessing. Power that will cross hand with my blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, it wasn't happening the first time. Genesis 17, 17. If you pull up Genesis 17, 17, let everybody listen. Particularly in verse 18. But let's take it very quickly. We are running out of time. Genesis chapter 17, verse 17. Genesis 17, 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed <laughs> and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Can somebody hear that? This is like Joseph that brought Manasseh and Ephraim and has Jacob to bless them. Man Manasseh is first. Ephraim is second. Just bless them like that. Abraham did the same thing. Abraham said, you are saying that a child of promise. You gave me a child already. His name is, is what? Ishmael. Ishmael. Shema Ishmael. Say that is his name. <laughs> Put the blessing on him. Let him be the one. <laughs> Look at what, what happened to Manasseh and if. Look at verse 18. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. All these great things you are telling me. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Wherever they have counted you out, every shall count you in. Wherever man has counted you out, every shall count you in. Where they have glossed you over, they shall come to celebrate you. Amen. Don't take that scripture off. <laughs> Just listen to that scripture. Somebody must be blessed by what I'm going to read to you now. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with what? With him for an everlasting covenant. And his seed after him. If you scroll it up. And as for Ishmael, this is the same thing that happened to Jacob. Uh, I know my son. I know my son. He also will become a great nation. 
That is who Manasseh. I know he's the firstborn. I know he's supposed to carry the firstborn blessing. I know he's supposed to have the double portion. I know he's supposed to be the one that will carry these blessings. I know, I know. But the younger one shall be bigger. It, it didn't start with Manasseh and Ephraim. Look at it with their grandfather, with Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael was the firstborn. But guess what? See what God said. He said, I have heard thee. Behold, I have heard thee. Just like the man said, I know, I know. God said, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and make him fruitful. And we multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. But that is not what we are looking for. We are looking for, for the firstborn blessing. They took it from Ishmael and gave it to who? Isaac. That is why the Arabs today believe that the real son of Abraham is not, a, is not Isaac, but Ishmael. Those reading the Quran, they believe today that the real, real son, the one that carries the blessing, is Ishmael and not Jacob. They still believe that today. Why? This flow that we are seeing with Manasseh and Ephraim, did not start with them. It started with their grandfather, Isaac. Isaac was second. Ishmael was first, but the second became first. As if that wasn't enough. When Isaac himself, listen, if you read this chapter now, Genesis 25, 23, when Isaac himself was going to have children, though it was delayed 40 years, he got married 40 years, there was no child. There is something evil flow of barrenness. What happened to the father? The evil flow of barrenness of his father. The man was, was so old and no child. And they called him the father. What father are you there if there are no children? But listen now. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger, and the other people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Can somebody read? Can we all read that verse together? And who? And? Say, and the elder shall serve who? Say it again. And the Say it again. And the this is Jacob and Esau. And the elder shall serve the younger. Is that not what you are seeing now with Ephraim and Manasseh? It is an evil flow. It is coming down the bloodline. They will make the junior to become the senior. If you are a junior and they want, if you are a senior and they want to make you a junior, you better pray. But pastor, it, it was God that ordained this. The powers of darkness, they are also ordaining things. Before we came to Christ, there are battles that followed us from when we did not know Christ. We are praying with the men's fellowship. The battles that followed me, the battles from the period when I did not know Christ, those battles may still be raging. And some of those battles, they are foundational and they are evil flow. The battle of when you, you did not know God, some of us know, Pastor, I've always known God. Pastor, were you born saved? You were not born saved. You got saved one day. Before you got saved, some gods were in charge of you. You served them. They formatted your character. They formatted your look. They formatted everything about you. In fact, they claimed that they gave you life. They claimed that your parents came to console them to have you. And then they now begin to rule. May their rulership break. Amen. Do you see now? That is not the end with Jacob and Esau. They all started from the womb. When they came to be blessed, the mother, even though the man wanted to bless the senior, the mother did not allow him to do so. The blessing that was going to Esau came to who? Came to Jacob. But some people say, God said it. Listen, I'm not arguing what God said and what God not said. I'm just telling you, everybody has a prayer to pray. Pray your own prayer. 
Jacob had the prayer to pray. Esau had the prayer to pray. Cain had the prayer to pray. Abel had the prayer to pray. You have the prayer to pray. I have the prayer to pray. And our prayer may counteract. I don't care. But heaven must answer me. Amen. Say heaven must answer me. Amen. Say heaven must answer me. Amen. Heaven must answer. Heaven must answer. Heaven must answer by fire. Heaven must answer. Heaven must answer. Heaven must answer. By fire, 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 heaven must answer. Listen, I can't close this foundation overflow. I want to pray. I want, and I want you to listen to the prayers we are going to pray now. Because there is some from these two evil flow. That I, I just showed you now. Believe me, some of us are confronted with this evil flow. One, the evil, the foundational evil flow of sickness. The woman came to meet the man of God. He said, the, grand, the great grandmother died of breast cancer. The great grandmother. The grandmother died of breast cancer. The mother died of breast cancer. And she now decided, since um, <laughs> all of them died, let me take off this breast. They died of what? Breast cancer. Great grandmother, grandmother, and mother. They died of what? Breast cancer. She said, I don't want to die of breast cancer. I will remove the breast. And she removed. See, there's no breast. I can breast cancer and kill me. That was what she thought. She removed the breast, but she still had cancer. That was not of the breast. What does, what does that mean? There is an evil flow that is coming from the foundation. Whatever evil flow that is coming from the foundation and it is sickness, we use the blood to suffocate it tonight. Amen. Every evil flow from your foundation that is sickness, let the stripes of the blood of Jesus take it out tonight. Amen. Say evil flow. From my foundation, foundation. called sickness. sickness. Can you say like a minute? Say, say like a minute. Shout it again. Say blood of Jesus, cut it off. Say blood, cut it off at my tongue. Can you say, let me hear you, evil flow. Everybody, please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. That is the pattern. Say, <laughs> delayed marriage. Delayed marriage. No, no, no. Say, evil flow from our foundation. Evil flow from our foundation. Call delayed marriage. Say, evil flow from our foundation. Evil flow from our foundation. Call role reversal. Call role reversal. Say, evil flow from our foundation. Called shame and disgrace at the edge of breakthrough. Say evil flow from our foundation. Call the emotion. Say evil flow from our foundation. Call delayed marriage. Say evil flow from our foundation. Call married but lonely. Say evil flow from our foundation. Called married but single. Say evil flow from a foundation. Called married but unhappy. Say evil flow from a foundation. 
call married but single. Blood of Jesus cut it off. So I want you, this is a personal prayer. Amen. Amen. This is a Hannah prayer. You, you need to weave the prayer. It is an evil flow. You know them one by one. Begin to mention them after this pattern and ask the blood of Jesus to cut it off. We shall start like this. Say, I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus for fresh anointing and fresh power. Say, it will flow from my foundation called delayed marriage. Blood of Jesus cut it off. Say, it will flow from my foundation called lack of helpers. The blood of Jesus cut it off. Say, it will flow from my foundation called married but single. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from my foundation. Called married but unhappy. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Shall we begin to pray? Evil flow from my foundation. Called loneliness. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from my foundation. Called married but lonely. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from my foundation. Called delayed marriage. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from my foundation. Called married but unhappy. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. It will flow from a foundation called polygamy. <laughs> Blood of Jesus, cut it off. It will flow from a foundation called multiple marriages. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. It will flow from a foundation. The woman must be pregnant before they get married. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. It will flow from a foundation called demotion. Can somebody pray? It will flow from a foundation. Call the motion. Evil flow from my foundation. Call sickness. Evil flow from my foundation. Call loneliness. Blood of Jesus called it up. Evil flow from my foundation. Call rejection. Blood of Jesus called it up. Blood of Jesus cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called role reversal in the place of marriage. Blood of Jesus cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called polygamy, polygamous witchcraft, multiple marriages. Blood of Jesus cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called multiple marriages. Blood of Jesus cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called lack of helpers. Blood of Jesus cut it off. Please pray. Please pray. It is an evil flow. Evil flow from a foundation called glory battles. Called glory exchange. Evil flow from a foundation called glory exchange. Called glory battles. Called marry but lonely. Called marry but single. Called marry but unhappy. Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. In Jesus' name we pray. Now take an offering and say, Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Say, Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Shall we pray? Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation. Pray on that offering. Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Please take an offering and pray on that offering. Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. Blood of Jesus, cut it off. Evil flow from a foundation called poverty. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the evil flow from your foundation called poverty, chronic poverty. Let that evil flow be cut off by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Every evil flow from your foundation called poverty, let the blood of Jesus cut it off. Amen. 
Father, as many as I join in this prayer, I pray every evil flow of poverty that will make them to labor and with nothing to show for it, that will make them to labor like an elephant and eat like an ant. Let the blood of Jesus cut off that evil flow. Amen. Every evil flow of poverty that is troubling your destiny, let it be cut off now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, accept this offering and take the glory. You will shout, say, evil flow from my foundation. Evil flow from my foundation. Call poverty. Call, Call chronic poverty. Die in, in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray evil flow from my foundation? Call chronic poverty. Die in the name of Jesus. Evil flow from my foundation. Call chronic poverty. Die in the name of Jesus. Evil flow from my foundation. Call chronic poverty. Die in the name of Jesus. Evil flow from my foundation. Call chronic poverty. Somebody needs to pray. It is coming from your foundation. Evil flow from my foundation. Call poverty. Die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray for a miracle of 24 hours. Father, some prayers we have said here tonight because you want some people to say them. Now they have said them. Do your part and take the glory. Say attack because of these prayers. Backfire in the name of Jesus. Say attack because I'm in this class. Backfire in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray attack because of my prayer? Backfire in the name of Jesus. Attack because I'm in this class. Backfire in the name of Jesus. Attack because I'm in this class. Backfire in the name of Jesus. Attack because of my In Jesus' name we pray. Good job. Please go with your blessing. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and Amen. be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you rest. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let the people of God shout, Seven, Hallelujah. Amen.